All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for all your patience. We're about to get started here. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to invite Scott Coker, Bellator president, as well as the uh, the competitors for Bellator's 149. So come on up and let's get started. Is you, bro? You guys get off. Let it tell us so we can get out of the way. Okay. Let's think if you. That's just a different, bro. I ain't scared of you, bro. Make sure we can get out of the way. No, I want to beat your ass. Shut up, man. Listen here, man. What the up? You have all the time you need. Come February 19th. Okay. You do a good job. I hear you, baby. I know. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Do what you do best. Lay down. I want to watch this one. I got you, boy. I hear you. Got you. Show the world. Start rapping. Sis ass. Dude. I hear you. That pumped me up. Wow. Wow, wow. <laughs> uh, before we get into the fighters, I'd like to uh, thank the media for attending our press conference today. Uh, there's a few people I'd like to thank uh, in addition. And um, one is our title sponsor, Light Beer from Miller. I'd like to thank Spike TV, Mr. Kevin Kay, who's been a big, big um, supporter of mixed martial arts. So thank you, Kevin. I'd like to thank the Texas State Athletic Commission, Mr. Greg Alvarez, as well as the Toyota Center. And before we go into uh, the fighters, we have one more gentleman here that really helped us in the local market. Uh, he has his own promotion. He went way out of his way to help us. He's, he's the reason why we came to Houston. And uh, that's uh, Mr. Mick Maynard. So Mick, why don't you come up and say a few words? <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Um, it's ironic because several years ago when we first started, uh, when I started Legacy Fighting Championship in the Houston area, we did our first event. Our role model was always uh, Strike Force and, and Scott Coker. Uh, he obviously started from the ground up, and that's what we've had to do ourselves. And in addition to that, we wanted to build Houston uh, to be the MMA mecca that I believe San Jose is. I believe it's the number one MMA city in the world. And so our goal this whole time is to be uh, seen in the same light, and I believe we've come uh, come full circle, and that's where we are today. So it really is an honor to have you here, uh, for Bellator to be here, and I think this is going to be a great event. It's obviously historic for many, many reasons, and uh, you're going to see a lot of legacy fighters on this card as well, uh, a lot of good prospects, a lot of vets, um, a lot of knockouts. It's going to be a great night, and thank you very much for having us. Thanks, Mick. <laughs> you know, when we talk about the... Um the genesis of this event, and I was talking to Ken about this a second ago, it really started uh, with um, the Fan Fest in November of last year when Tito Ortiz fought Stephen Bonner. And uh, we had a Fan Fest, and we invited Hoist, and we invited Frank, and Randy, and, and we invited Ken. And I hadn't seen Ken in probably six or seven years uh, at that point. And he walks into the Dave and Busters there in San Diego, and he looks across the room, and he says, well, he said, hello, Scott, first. And that's <laughs> nice to see you. you. I haven't seen you in nice six, seven years. But he walks in, and, and he says, I want to fight that guy. And I said, who, who do you want to fight? And the only person I could see at that, at that point was Randy Couture. I said, you want to fight Randy Couture? And he said, no, 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 the other, the other guy. He goes, that guy. And I look, and it was Hoist. And so in my mind, that's really what I started thinking about was, hmm, maybe this could be a possibility one day. I mean, this was the genesis that started mixed martial arts back in 93. And, uh, you know, it's a privilege as a promoter to have these two legends sitting next to me. And so I thank Ken, I thank Hoist for taking the fight. Uh, and it didn't take much to talk Hoist into it either. He was, you know, I said, Hoist, do you want to do this? And he said, what? 
I'll do it right now. I'll find him in a phone booth. I'll find him on the street. I'll find him in the floor. Let's do it. I go, no, no, no. It's not. It's not like he, he doesn't want to fight you right now. He, we're talking about a professional fight in the Bellator cage. And so, you know, these guys are ready to get it on. And and I think that you see the heat from, uh, you know, Kimbo and Dada. I think that that fight has a lot of emotion and passion behind it. And uh, it's going to be a great night, a great night of fights on Friday uh, here at the Toyota Center. So at this point, I'd like to open it up. Uh, maybe Hoyce, you could just say a few words what can I say I'm back <laughs> can't wait I'm ready Ken well I, first of all I just want to say uh, thank you for all showing up and um, uh, and, uh, and Scott Coker and Bellator uh, Spike TV uh, thank you guys I tell you um, it's a fight that's been wanted to have happened for you know 23 years for whatever reasons, it never happened. Uh, Scott saw it, saw the opportunity to put something together that's going to be legendary and to give back to the fans that have been great for so many years. So uh, for that, thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to uh, Friday the 19th at the Toyota Center um, where I get to step in the ring against Hoist Gracie. And uh, we'll see if I'm ready. And um, for everybody that's here locally, come on down to the event and watch it. And if uh, you're not here locally, tune in on Spike TV on this Friday. It's free at 9 p.m. Kimbo, a few words? I'll just wait till I get asked the question. Okay. Dada? Listen, I thank each and every one of you guys. You fool! Shut up, man. Man, listen. You ain't got shit to hey, say. Listen, bro, I got something. You look you. like shit in your training I, yesterday. I, I, <laughs> nothing you can do can hurt me, bro. But listen to this These right here. People ain't going to be when here to I protect put my you hands Friday, on Dada. you. You're going to understand what it feels Stop like here. to be helpless for the first time in a long time him. in your life. You understand me, bro? At the end of the day, you ain't listen never meet me. nobody that's going to hit listen you as me. hard as me. You fuck with Ferg. You call me out. Listen. You call out Kevin Ferguson, You are a non-factor, bro. Okay. I'm going to show you. I hear you. I'm going to bust your what? ass off. I hear you, Friday, bro. And guess what? I'm, I'm planning on doing the same thing to you, After dude. After I knock your ass out, I keep my you. name out your mouth. I hear you. Listen to dude. Don't that say sounds shit good. Up. But at the end of the day, Don't you're not up. capable physically or mentally of doing none of that shit that you talk about, bro. Physically, I'm not, bro. Man, listen, dude. Sure. I'm a manhandle you, dude. Yeah. I promise you that. Okay. Okay. I promise okay, you that. So Put let's, your uh, pants down. Let me see size. <laughs> man, listen, I'll show man. my nuts right now. Let I me mean, see your nuts. Yeah, yeah. You, want you got to baby do nuts, Dada. You, you, do that you got baby nuts. I bet you my nuts bigger than yours. I hear you, Come man. Come on. I hear you. Okay. You do what you feel, do. I you, bet you, you my nuts bigger than yours. You do what you my do. My nuts bigger than yours. Man, whatever, man. No, no, have have a seat, guys. Have a seat. see you in the rain when I knock you out, nigga. Oh, uh, okay. Straight up. Straight up. See, that's, that's it. <laughs> Dog, you ain't scared out of nobody. you, bro. Who did you knock out? Hey, no nuts, please. I'm going to tell you like this right here. Despite who you feel See, like I'm giving thought, you your time you know now, right? No, no, no. You're going there on the phone. I'm giving you your time you. by going and back then, and forth on, with you now. He asked you. You ain't got nothing to say. Because next Friday, you right? Friday is my you know time. That's why I shine at, bro. nothing but what you doing now. Dada, listen to me, Dada. I don't need to listen to you. Who the hell is you? Listen to me. Kevin Anthony Ferguson? I'm giving you your time right now. Listen, you show me. time is going to be You show me. That's you what show I me. do best. Listen okay. here, you show me. You're doing you, too I'm, much I'm talking, gonna, man. You I'm show gonna. me. I'm gonna. You're not no capable. No one's going to be there but me and I you, I hear bro. you. Three people going in. Okay. Only two coming out on their own will, and that's me and I'm the rest. You ain't right got to be a rocket scientist to figure out who's getting left. I got you, bro. I tell you, I'm going to rip something off on you, man. <laughs> okay. I, hear you. Uh, I got you. You bro. ain't feel pain yet, bro. <laughs> Let's open it up uh, for questions. You and your puppets over there. Please tell us who you knocked out. John Morgan. John Morgan has a question back there. Hey, man, come on, squeaky man. You know, hey, listen here. You know where I'm at. You, you know where I'm at, homeboy. No, 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 no. Nigga, the same thing. Hold on, my nigga. Listen, listen. You, nigga, nigga, hold on. You been getting ran up out the flea market. Yeah, it is. Nigga, you ain't bought that, man. You know where I'm at. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man. We are handle that. We're out of that. Come on, man. You ain't, nigga, you ain't gonna hit nothing. Ain't gonna let nothing get hit. Okay, uh, John. Uh, John, you better speak really you. fast. All right. I hear you. <laughs> well, uh, we'll start I hear with Ken. You. Tough guy. Uh, okay, like question Ken for Ken Shamrock, please. We're here. You already know, man. Uh, Ken, yesterday at the at the open workouts, you you started your day by by, by going out of your way to praise Royce Gracie and offer your your, your respect for him. Uh, why was it so important for you to get that message out to to offer the respect right before a fight? Well, I think it's important that we understand um, the legacy of the UFC and 
how the Gracie families uh, brought the UFC and also MMA to the United States and to allow us to be able to compete in this great organization. Hoist Gracie did something that um, I think that um, will never go unforgotten. He fought four guys in one night, outweighed double sometimes, and, uh, and prevailed in three tournaments, I believe three or four, I'm not sure which, but um, just did something tremendous. And so uh, I, I don't have much time in this sport, and I want to enjoy every moment of it, but I also want to make sure that I show uh, my respect to uh, everybody that has helped this sport along. So I want to make sure that I got that out first before before I told you my intentions. He's not a big trash talker, of course, never has been, but he didn't necessarily have the best things to say about you. He said you talk too much and that sort of thing. So when you're going out of your way to be respectful, is it frustrating to, to have maybe not that same feeling coming back? Absolutely not. I, I, you know, this is a sport that we're in. I did it for me, not for anybody else. I did it for the fans, and I showed my appreciation from my heart, from what I felt. And it's, it doesn't, it, it, I don't want anything back from that. Um, I'm here to do what I do, but I, before I go do what I do, I just wanted to show that respect. And after that, the fight's on. Thank you, Ken. Hoist, if I could briefly for you. Ken has gone out of his way to say how much this fight means to him, his legacy, his, his entire future, everything he's done is in this fight. Does this fight have special meaning for you like that, where it's impacting your life, impacting your legacy, or is this just you coming back? Every fight means everything to me. So that's what I do. Thanks, Hoist. And just briefly, if I could, for Kimbo, um, you mentioned that uh, some people weren't all that impressed uh, with what they saw out of Dada 5000 in the gym yesterday, maybe a little bit underwhelmed by what they saw. Tell me what you saw. Did you see footage and break it down? What, what, what did you see of his work yesterday? I mean, like I said, you know, dude looked like shit, you know, but I don't know if that's how, this, how he really trains. I don't know that. I'm going to take this fight like I take every fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm the next man Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? If you coming in, if you coming in to fight me looking like that, dog, you're going to get your ass smashed. You know what I'm saying? Because this, this, you, you got to put time in this shit here, man. This, this is not a game. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't, you don't get a fight by running your mouth. You get a fight from being, being good, to, to be able to be a well-rounded fighter. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I had to put my time in here. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I know positions. You know what I'm saying? I can feel shit coming on. You know, I'm, I'm a well-rounded fighter, but I don't think I need to use my skills to knock this clown-ass nigga out, man. For real. This nigga's a shit talker. He talk a lot of shit. He looked like shit yesterday. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm going to just bang his ass up. I've never took a fight and joy, f like, beating a person's ass. I really feel good about this one. And this is the first. I have no worries, no fear. There's nothing this nigga could do that's going to hurt me. I'm, I proved myself over 10 years, 10 years in this fight game. This pussy, excuse me, my baby girl right there. This dude ain't don't know nothing about that there, man. I'm, I can stand in his face and put the hands on him, but I'm going to be smart. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show the professional that I am, and I'm going to bang his ass up, and I'm going to knock his ass out, because I'm waiting to see the legends go at it. That's all I got to say about this. Dada, since you walked in, since he walked in, you haven't taken your eyes off him. When's the last time you guys got together in a room before Houston? What's he liked the way I look. That's why he can't take his eyes off me. See? <laughs> Trying to breathe like me and everything, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you're repping the 305, right? All, all day. There you go. When's the last time you talked to him? What's the last words the two of you had with each other before all of this? Man, listen, this guy, you know, he sent me emails in the past years ago when I started the backyard. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I haven't seen Email seen address, by You sent me, you, know, you, you sent emails in the backyard. Us, when I was doing what I was it? doing. Listen, at the end us? of the day, it's like this right here. I, 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 I haven't emailed seen you, the guy bro. in years. When I started you doing the backyard about? fighting, he told me a while ago, I hope you're training hard as fuck. You know what I'm saying? You better be ready. Guess what? I'm ready. You gonna lie for these people I'm right ready. here? You gonna tell these people I did this to you? When I was doing the back, you really gonna tell these people I told said you this. that? And you gave me a call and you said, "Hey, listen, we're in arms reach of each other." I never ran from nobody. I never been scared of nobody. I'll that's be just damn. the difference. You know what I'm saying? See, you could wow. talk because that right there is what you know best. But see, you can't put two and two together to come up with nothing good for yourself, let alone for somebody else. Come Friday night. You, you just know my bring daughter that drama. is over there listening to this you shit you saying. You just bring that drama. You that you this. spoke of. You know my daughter is listening it. to the shit you, you saying, You just bring right? that drama. I'm You're talking to you, bro. You're proving to the world that you're a liar. I'm, you I'm do know that, right? You. you bring that drama you lying, though, that Dr. you spoke Bill. of. You, you, you did that. Okay. I don't got to lie. All right, my man.
Just like you only come back to the hood just, when it's beneficial for you, bro. I don't even go back to the hood. Exactly. For the, you said it. You said you this seven-figure dude you move with what, the white what, folks. What are you about? That's not the problem. The problem, the issue that the people had in the streets, which is that you never came back to each his own. But guess what? The truth hurts. But this right here got to be killing you. Man, you digging yourself into a I hear you, man. Bro. Listen, show me, man. I promise you, man. You have no idea what you're stepping in the ring with. If, if I may. Yes. Uh, Luke, sorry. Didn't want to interrupt too much. Uh, Scott, to what extent was there any effort or interest in making this fight in Miami? You know, um, we actually had a conversation internally about um, doing the fight in Miami, but we felt that um, the timing was perfect for this event. And, um, you know, we had already talked to the uh, venue and we were ready to go. So, you know, I think this fight resonates anywhere and people can feel the heat. It's the most media I think we've received ever in the, in the fight with Hoyce and Ken, Dada and Kimbo. I mean, you know, the, the media turnout has been amazing. The digital stuff that we've been pumping out has been amazing. I feel, I feel the momentum building, and on a Friday night, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be big. And one more, if I may. Do you have any figure on ticket sales for the Toyota Center for this event? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, uh, ticket sales are going extremely well. I think, you know, we're expecting a full house. Careful. Careful. <laughs> Careful. Can you recap what went on and why everybody ta- has been talking about this forever the last time you guys got together? Yeah, I mean, um, we, it's back in 93 when me and Hoist first got in a ring. And uh, since that time, a lot of different things have transpired in which I've spoke about. Um, and uh, Hoist has his vision of it. And uh, I have mine. And uh, it's been a while since we've been able to put this fight together. I know I've tried several times. For, for whatever reason, they didn't happen. Um, and I pretty much gave up on it. And then uh, I made mention to Scott that I'd like to fight him. And, um, you know, here we are today with the opportunity to put something to rest that's been going on for 23 years. Because every time that conversation comes up, I hear their side saying, I just laid on him. And my side says, well, if he just laid on you, how good does that make you? So it's just been a conversation uh, piece that uh, tends to never die down. And most of the time, you don't ever get to settle it. But um, fortunately for me and Hoist, we've stayed in good shape. Uh, We're both very competitive. And um, we get to get in the ring and actually settle it without arguing about it. A question for Kimbo and, and for Dada. It's fair to say you guys are both super angry now. How are you guys going to be able to channel that energy come Friday where talking's not going to matter? you got to get in the cage, lock the door. How are you guys going to control your emotions when fight time comes? I will say this. I'll take this one first. It's the difference, you know what I'm saying, between angry and being hungry. You see what I'm saying? Now, if you guys have watched Dog Fight, right? One, we're filming Dog Fight 2. Come Friday night, Kimbo Slice is needed for the main ingredient. Kimbo, your response? I, I wasn't listening. <coughs> with the, with, with That's you good. Said. You're going to feel it. He just said that Friday, the, the main event, or Friday, the fight between you two is going to be the main ingredient for the second dog <laughs> fight film. <laughs> but I, 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 <laughs> Good, I'd like to just, uh, uh, is it Melvin back there? Yeah. Melvin, how you doing? My question is for the two legends. Um, I'm excited to be fighting on the court with you guys, by the way. Melvin! Um, I just want to know what Shamrock and Gracie, like what you guys have in this trilogy, this legacy, is there any bad blood with you guys going into this? Or you guys are just taking it as, you know, parts of your legacy to finish off what you guys started so greatly in 93? To me, he's just another opponent. A new one. Just another opponent. Yeah, uh, for me, um, man, I tell you, uh, I'm, a, I'm very emotional when I fight. And um, all my fights mean something to me. And I always have to find something to my opponent that, that uh, makes me angry. And I pick at it. But afterwards, I have nothing against them. I'm over it. I'm finished. It's time to move on. And that's the same thing in this fight. Um, there's definitely an issue here in which I want settled. I've been asking for it for quite some time. I'm getting it. 
and in the ring we get to settle it. And and after it's over, it's over. I mean, and that's just been my my personality since day one. <laughs> well, let's start with number three first. <laughs> Question for Ken. You were just in there with Kimbo a couple months ago, sitting next to Dada. Have you guys shared any thoughts? Have you talked to him about what it's like to be in there with Kimbo? Uh, I wouldn't do that. Um, personally, for me, that's just unprofessional. Um, fighters have to go in and fight their own fights. Uh, I'm friends with Kimbo and Dada. Um, I'm very much looking forward to watching these two guys fight. In fact, is this is the kind of stuff that I do like. Um, I love it when two guys want to go in there and take each other apart. And uh, hopefully when it's over, though, you know, it's over. So hopefully that, that's what will happen with this fight. Thank you. And question for Scott. What does it mean to you as a, in your legacy as a promoter? Obviously, you've been around a really long time in the fight game to put together Ken and Hoist two of the guys that, that started it all. What's it mean to you for your legacy? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think about 1993, sitting uh, in my friend's living room watching UFC 1 and watching these two fighters go at it. And that was the pivot point that changed martial arts to what it is today. Before that, kickboxing was around. People had sometimes had to wear long pants, get eight kicks in per round. We had a deal on ESPN. We did all different types of kickboxing, but uh, it really made you go, "Wow, what what is this?" And it really changed the the. There's like a shift in. You can't just be a striker. That's that's what I thought. I you you better start going and learning some jujitsu, and that's what happened because the Gracie family came out, challenged everybody, and they said, "Hey, we're here to stay." And then they proved it. And so that legacy has continued. But it was that fight that really changed the history of martial arts. And I think a lot of people that don't understand what martial arts was like back before that time, it was like the karate school didn't like the kung fu school, the taekwondo school didn't like the judo school, the jiu-jitsu guys probably didn't like everybody. And, uh, but in seriousness, it was really a segregated you know, style, like my style versus your style. As crazy as that sounds, that's what it was like in the in that era before that. And then, you know, this fight really made people change. Say, hey, I need to become a well-rounded fighter. I need to go learn some jiu-jitsu. I better learn some wrestling. I better learn some striking. And it's really what has evolved into martial arts today. Not just in the cage, we're talking about martial arts as in effective application of techniques really was founded, I mean, to me, from that day, that fight moving forward. And um, so that's the significance of it. I mean, it was, it was a pivot point for martial arts. I'm proud to do this fight. Man, I'm telling you, I've, I've watched this fight in my mind, the walkout, going to the cage, these two guys, the locking of the cage, and then, you know, I can't see past that point. So to me, I'm really excited to see both these fights. And uh, you guys can all tune in. 9 p.m. Spike TV and watch it for free. Thank you. Any we good? Uh, any other questions? Real quick, uh, Dada and Kimbo, you have fighters in the past who don't like one another. They have a lot of animosity, um, but after the fight, regardless of the outcome, you know they shake hands and you know it is what it is. Between you two, will there ever be a point where you two shake hands? Man, I got no reason to be friends with this dude. dude Vice versa. Lied on me. Nigga done lied on me, man. Vice versa. I got no reason to be friends with this dude. I'm done See, talking, man. I'll do the rest of my talking inside the ring. Again. Yeah. I got no reason to be friends with this dude. Let's break it down. Thank you guys for coming, and uh, we're going to get on some one-on-ones here. Just schedule with Danny. So, yeah, guys, if, if you can give us a minute, we're going to take these tables down and do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, face-off photo op.